Hello everyone, welcome to another video on the channel and welcome to another GT Sport Daily Race C race review. We don't do too many of these on the channel these days, but we're going to cover a race we did last night, Monday night, at the Red Bull Ring in the Group 4 machinery as the new set of dailies went live. Settings on the screen there, 12 laps to get around, fuel at times 2, tyre wear at times 3, just the racing hard tyres available, and we go into the race details, we can see we have a mandatory pit stop. I do think PD need to try and make that a little bit more obvious within the, the main screen, so as people are not getting caught out by that, but... As you can see, we have jumped into a lobby here on a Monday night. I think it was a half past nine race. So the lobbies on a Monday night tend to be extremely strong. Uh, obviously, a lot of players playing because it's the new races that have gone live. And we have jumped in the Genesis from Group 4 and we have not set a qualifying time. And we're starting all the way down in P18. Now, I don't often jump on on a Monday night, but for a number of reasons, A... The lobbies are uber competitive and uh, I just tend to find myself driving around at the back. You've got a lot of people streaming, a lot of people know they're going to be on streams as well. It become very, very sweaty and try hard and aggressive at times. So, as I said, I tend to avoid sort of entering the lobbies on a Monday night just before those reasons we've outlined there. However, it is nice to jump on on the odd occasion just to remind yourself just how average you are at the game because sometimes you know when you're playing during the week and as the week progresses and you're running up towards the front and you're picking up podiums and the odd occasional win you kind of maybe get lofty expectations or lofty uh, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is but it can kind of maybe give you a false dawn in how good you are at the game so it's good to jump on on a Monday night and just be reminded that you know there's a lot more faster drivers out there than you might think and that's kind of what we did here, we decided to jump on a Monday night, see how we hold up against the fastest players at the time. I think there's at least six World Tour finalists maybe in this race, certainly six to seven uh, top split FIA uh, players from the EMEA, EMEA region. So very, very competitive, very, very quick. And you're going to see we're going to take a little bit of a humbling experience here as we circulate down towards the back and have a very little impact on the race. We did make up an early position there as the G, no it's a Mustang, sorry, not a GTR in front of us, picked up a half second penalty and uh, managed to make up a position there. Coming down to the hairpin on lap number two though, the Mustang obviously quite keen to get that position back. We actually defend it. Anyone who kind of uh, watches me regularly knows I'm not the biggest driver on defending if I think it's going to cost me time. But I thought, you know, this is where my race is tonight. Uh, we're going to be at the back here, why not defend while we can and we have some nice driving there with uh, the Mustang driver. The driver behind the Mustang there and the Scirocco is Alex Oney. He is a top split FIA player, possibly been to a World Tour, I'm not world, uh, entirely sure about that, but extremely quick anyway, there is no two doubting about that. So having made that position upon the Mustang, I can see that the Mustang was keen to get that position back and probably a little bit quicker than us as well, particularly uh, with the slipstream here we're going to become under a lot of pressure on some of the longer straights on this track. So we decided we're probably going to lose less time by just going in for this early mandatory pit stop nice and early. Get uh, out the way of the traffic, not have to defend. Pretty poor pit entry on my part there, but yeah, by not having to defend, being able to run some clean laps, we should uh, be able to kind of then put in representative lap times and hopefully there's some infighting up in the midfield and we can maybe gain some positions towards the end of the race once all the pit stops unfold. Now it looks like Alex Zoni and the Scirocco has had the same idea behind us which was not ideal because I knew I was going to come under immediate pressure from the Spaniard. Down in towards the hairpin though, we got a much better drive out of the pit lane, the front wheel drive of the Scirocco, not able to get the power down quite as nicely as the Genesis out of these slow corners, so we did manage to hold on for most of the lap, however, towards the last couple of corners here, Alex only goes for the move down into the inside of the penultimate corner, I did think it was the smartest move to be, or the smartest move to actually go for the overtake there, probably caused both of us a lot more time than necessary, I think had he had a half decent run up towards the hairpin on the next lap they were about to jump on here, it'd probably been better off and more beneficial to both of us. However, over the next four or five laps, we just remained with the Scirocco in the slipstream there, actually setting some very nice lap times for us, 37.4 on a couple of occasions, and 
We kind of forced Alex Zoni into a mistake coming out of the last corner there. Picks up a track limits penalty now. I could tell by this point he was starting to struggle a little bit with the front tyres as you would expect in the Scirocco and not quite getting the drive out the corners that you may expect. And I was pleasantly surprised to be able to hold on with Alex Zoni in the slipstream uh, given how quick we know that driver is. So we're going to make up a position here on Alex Zoni even though we kind of make a very very small mistake coming out of the hairpin. As he serves that half second penalty we then have enough overspeed to get the move done down towards turn number four here. Now again, I was thinking, well, oh, this isn't ideal to be honest with you because we're just immediately going to come under pressure again from the Spaniard. However, it turns out once we get into clean air, we're actually able to lap just as quick as we could when we were in the slipstream and maybe even just a little bit quicker. Uh, so very, very happy with the lap times we were saying and the consistency all the way here to lap number 12. And so this is where we kind of get the big reveal, if you like, as the last of the drivers make those mandatory pit stops. We can see a couple of RCZ emerging from the pit lane as we start lap number 12 here. Then it kind of shows as well the kind of little fine margins that can decide your races here. I kind of think to myself, if Alex only hadn't made that move where he made it and maybe kind of done it on a straight, both of us would probably have got by these two RCZs. Uh, on the run down to the hairpin. As it is though, we were very cautious into the hairpin, trying to avoid contact with them. You can see we lose a little bit of uh, time there and Alex only actually goes round the outside of us. And uh, we're actually now in a defensive situation from Doc Brown. Not a great situation here because I know these two RCZs are going to struggle through this middle sector with the tyre wear. Uh, but yeah, the fine margins that kind of decide these races when everybody's so competitive, everybody's so quick. We could have been up there in P12, wouldn't it be a terrible result given we started in P18 and at the strength of the lobby? And yeah, as I said, a humbling experience on a Monday night because I drove this race almost flawlessly. Uh, the lap times there, I was very happy with the consistency and we've just made no progress really whatsoever. Now we can't be too hard on ourselves because obviously Alex Zoni has obviously not made that much progress uh, at the same time. And we know he's a much quicker driver than us but yeah, we're going to come across the line here in 14th place in the end. The two RCZs have a little bit of a come together, allows us to slip by one of them and uh, move into 14th place. Possibly the best 14th place I've ever picked up. Uh, but as I said, also a very humbling experience because I thought I drove really, really well, really happy with the lap times and P14 was all we had in the bag. When we look at the lap times further up the lobby, you can see the drivers up at the front, Key picking up the win at the end, uh, but you can just see the lap times up there. It's a different league, you know, they're, they're lapping a second a lap quicker than you, despite your best efforts. But yeah, let me know what you think. Have you been in this position? Do you, you know, do you think sometimes with a humbling experience can kind of bring you back down to earth just a little bit? Anyway, please hit that like button, please hit that subscribe button if you like what we're doing on the channel, and I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye now.